If you focus on dead tissue, it's dried out. So if you, if you look at fascia in the electron microscope, you might see something, but that something may not represent reality. We have traveled to Seattle for an interview with Gerald Pollack, professor of bioengineering and world-leading expert on water and its role in biological systems. The living body contains water. Um, there's so much water in our bodies. You know, we, we, um, we talk about uh, our bodies uh, consisting of roughly two-thirds water, but the two-thirds water is by volume. But if you translate that to the fraction of molecules that are water, uh, it turns out there are a lot of water molecules because they're really small to fill that two-thirds volume. And if you line up all the molecules in, in, in the body, or all the molecules, for example, in fascia, um, you'll find that some, more than 99 out of 100 are water molecules. Many people have asserted that water is nothing more than a background carrier of uh, the molecules of life, but what we found is that water is absolutely central to everything that happens in, inside the cell and outside the cell, and in fascia too. Pollack is perhaps most known for his discovery of a fourth phase of water that differs from the usual phases solid, liquid and gas. We learned that water has three phases, um, you know, solid, liquid and vapor, but we found the fourth phase. But this water is actually, because of the molecular structure, is viscous. So you can take an example, um, uh, maybe a familiar example, a raw egg. Uh, if you open a raw egg and, and feel the egg white, uh, which is effectively the cytoplasm of the cell, it's, it's not a liquid, it's gel-like. The fourth phase of water, often referred to as EC water, is characterized by a higher density, greater viscosity, and a negative charge compared to regular water. This discovery has opened up new possibilities for understanding interactions between cells and biological materials, and has the potential to significantly alter our understanding of any processes involving water. It's not really a surprise if the water inside the cell is fourth phase water because fourth phase water is viscous and sticky. It stays inside and this water, um, it contains energy. You can't create energy out of nothing. That's a physical law which seems to me reasonable and I believe it's true. All you can do is convert one kind of energy to another kind of energy. At the age of 83, Pollack is fully active at the university, running his own research group and exploring the possibilities of extracting energy from water. It all starts uh, with a, sur a material that's here and the surface, and this is a hydrophilic, water-loving surface. And we start uh, by putting water um, next to the surface. This is ordinary liquid water. And then um, uh, we fill the water with little particles, um, so uh, just like that, all over. And what happens um, over a period of maybe five minutes or so is that all these particles get pushed in this direction. They get excluded uh, from this region. And what you wind up with is um, a zone uh, right here that has no particles, and all the particles are pushed out here. They undergo a transformation from the liquid water uh, to the fourth phase water. It's a massive uh, transition. And uh, this is what we found to be uh, easy water or fourth phase of, uh, of, of water. And, um, and we found that it has charge. We found that if you stick an electrode in here, you measure negative charge in this easy region. And these are positive charges are sitting out here. So you've got negative charges there and positive charges beyond. And, and you know, if you've got negative and positive, you have a battery. So it means that this water that we're talking about contains energy. We don't think about water. We think of water as inert. We don't think of it as containing energy, but it has energy. And so the fact is, um, um, if this water really is what fills your cells, and we have ample evidence for that, 
um, then it's an energy source. And we later, we found that the battery is powered by infrared light. So, you know, it's a, it's a kind of a revolution in thought that we can get energy not only from ATP, but also from this electrical source. If we're right, um, uh, then a lot of what we understand to be cell biology is wrong. Gerald Pollack is also known for his commitment to science and his willingness to question established paradigms. His method is to always stay connected to nature and the principles of life. For example, why living creatures, plants and even objects can be clearly seen in the darkness with the help of infrared cameras. You might say, um, you know, it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that the source of energy must be light. Like, just like a plant, like photosynthesis, you know, the light comes and step one in the stages of photosynthesis is the breakage of water into plus and minus, just like what we found, um, and, and energized by light. So what we found may be a kind of generic, uh, a generic feature of nature, um, of which um, in plants, nature exploited this principle and optimized it. And we found that infrared energy is the ultimate source. Um, so you might ask, you know, where, where does infrared energy come from? You know, we know uh, if you have a toaster and, and you push the bread down, you can see the coils inside and they're glowing. Um, and you say, oh, this orange glow is radiant energy. It's infrared energy that somehow is, is built up. Um, and that's true, but infrared energy is just all over the place. Everything around us is, is generating infrared energy. And, um, and that includes this chair, uh, and, and me, and my pants, and my, my sweater, uh, and such, and this cup of coffee. It should be water, but, you know, sometimes uh, you know how it is. Um, and the way you can prove it um, is um, you can take a, a camera, just like an ordinary camera, but the sensor is sensitive not to visible wavelengths, but to infrared wavelengths only. So. And you can turn off all the lights, so it's completely dark uh, in, in this room. You can't see anything, and your camera would record nothing. Um, and you can see nothing, but you whip out this infrared camera and get an image, and you see a beautiful image of everything in this, this room, because everything is generating infrared energy. Pollack started by researching muscle contractions. Eventually, his attention turned to understanding radiation and energies, and then all processes involving water and electrical energy, climate, eco-restoration, battery manufacturing, and how this works in the body. And this is where the fascia becomes so central. And so uh, it may be that the fascia is involved in the transport or movement of water inside the body, you never know that if you look at, um, at chemically prepared uh, sections for electron microscopy because it's dead tissue. When you look at the live tissue, you can see so much more. I think uh, medicine will undergo a revolution, and we need that. <laughs>